Hi folks, in this video we're going to be looking at how I painted these grimy rusty knives on this Plague Monk miniature. So, without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, I'll be putting a base coat of black paint down on the areas that I want to be metal. The black paint that he used doesn't really matter. The idea here is that we are turning our grey primed area that we want to be metallic and making it black. The reason that we're doing this is metallic paints tend to cover massively better and have a much better finish over a black base coat than they do over a grey or a white. If you've got any miniatures that are in a light coloured primer, I always recommend painting areas that you want to be metals with a black base coat first and then you'll be much more happy with the results than if you went straight onto a grey or white primer. First metallic colour I'm putting down a dark silver and in this case it's black metal from scale 75. But you can use any dark silver that you'd like. This is a fairly straightforward step. I've thinned this down with a little bit of water and I'm just looking to get a nice smooth base coat all over the areas that I want to be silver. On this particular model, it's just the knife blades itself, but do keep an eye out for any bits of uh, chains or manacles that you often see on Skaven miniatures. So do do a once over your Skaven model if you aren't using this particular Skaven model as a reference piece. To highlight the metallic bits of the model, I'm coming in with some thrash metal from scale 75. And with this, I'm focusing on areas that light would hit, but I'm not being particularly neat with any blending or section areas, as I will be coming in with some rust effects, and I'll be rusting up these blades. So with this model, I am picking out uh, an edge on the back sharpest edge of the blade, and I'm picking out the cutting edges and any flat bits of the blade such as that triangular section at the top and on the cutting section of the blade uh, painting some of this thrash metal down towards the bottom. This is due to the way that light hits in a zenithal. You're going to have your dark at the top and as the light is coming down at a much more shallow angle you're going to get that bottom edge lit up. As I said, we don't have to be particularly neat with any form of transition on here. I'm just painting in an area that I think might look good to have a lighter bit of silver on. I'm painting in a little bit there on the middle of the flat of the blade here. The exact blend and nature of the highlight isn't important at all. Once our rust effects go down, the majority of this will be hidden and we'll just see suggestions of highlight placement so we can be incredibly rough and messy at this stage. Now we can't have a Plague Monk knife that isn't rusty and looks like you could get something horrible off it just by looking at it. So to start our rusting effects, I'm heavily thinning down some Mournfang Brown from Games Workshop. And as you can see, this is almost a glaze consistency, but a little bit thicker. And with this, I'm almost going to do a controlled wash onto the model. So I'm picking areas that I want to be this rusty color and tapping the brush onto it and as you can see quite a lot went on here but if you clean the brush off and with the clean damp brush tap up onto the blade you will find that a lot of the excess pigment gets pulled up and you can do this in quite a controlled method and by keeping this thin it's really easy to push this pigment around and get the model looking quite rusty in areas that you want it. Uh, you can do one or two passes on this and I would look to cover probably most of the silver with this making sure you get in all those pits and crevices on the uh, really poor quality Skaven weaponry. Uh, we don't want these weapons to look silver with a little bit of rust. We want these to be mostly rusty with a little bit of the silver showing through. But the trick with this is taking your time on it, you know, if you're not practiced at doing a more wash style rust effect, then add a little bit that's quite thin, wait for it to dry, come and add an extra bit. This is really easy to add to. And at this stage, if you think, oh, I've done too much, you can always just 
go back over with your silver colours and have another coat. And this will dry lovely and matte, which will give us our really nice base coat for working on rusty effects. And as I said, if you're not happy while it's still wet, clean your brush off and just wick away any excess or tap onto it with a little bit of extra paint and you to get the desired areas coated in this Mordvang Brown. Next, we are going to do exactly the same thing as we did in the previous step, but this time with some thinned scrag brown. And with this, I'm painting about half of the areas that we covered with the Mornfang Brown on the previous step, making sure that we do focus in all the pits and crevices. As you can see, this is a lovely orangey brown color, and this is gonna give us a really nice impression of fresh rust. Whereas the Mornfang Brown is your aged rust. The fresh rust that's, that's newly oxidized is this vivid orangey color. And this scrag brown is perfect for that. And the reason that I'm doing it this way, rather than applying something like Dirty Down Rust or Typhus Corrosion with a dry brush, is that this gives me a lot more control of exactly where I want the rusty areas to be. As an optional final highlight on the rust, uh, I'm adding in a little bit of Bestigore Flesh into the scrag brown to add a slightly more yellow tint into the orange rust. As you can see there is a stark colour difference here and it's really important to keep this at a consistency which you can control and I'm using the very tip of the brush and I'm almost doing a stippling motion. I'm doing some very light dots. If you think you've covered too much then quickly wipe away the excess with your finger or use a clean brush or rinse the brush off, get nice and wet and then wick away some of the paint. I'm keeping this a little thicker than the other two in this rust effect because I want to have as much control over this as I can. This is probably what I'd consider a layer consistency rather than a wash or a glaze consistency. This is an entirely optional highlight but I find it really does give that nice fresh rust, almost yellowy feel to the model. The last step in this rusty knife tutorial, I'm coming in with some heavy metal silver from scale 75. And with this, I'm going to be looking at picking out all the cutting edges and all of the edges that are going to see fresh use. So this is going to be the very edge of those pits. It's going to be that cutting edge and anything that's a really sharp edge that might get rubbed against where that fresh oxidized rust is going to flake off of the weapon or the manacle and is going to see more of its natural uh, iron color underneath. The exact silver that you use doesn't really matter for this. Pick your favorite bright silver. And rather than highlighting every single edge, think about the edges where the weapon is going to see use. You can highlight that flat back of the blade if you want to cause the uh, metallics to pop out and especially if you've gone very heavy on the rust effects, uh, adding in some of the silver paint to define shapes can be really good at allowing these weapons to pop and draw visual interest to them. As you can see here on the back there, that triangle and the two rectangles have sort of merged together with the rust effects. So this silver paint coming in, doing some line scratches and dots to break those shapes up, really allows the viewer to have more visual interest on the model and sells a more uh, realistic idea that this is seeing use by that fresh edge being created. And with that, the rusty areas on this Plague Monk are now complete. This is a really nice technique that is really good to learn, even if you prefer doing things like Dirty Down Rust, Learning these more focused washing glazing style rust effects really does allow you to uh, push your understanding of volumetric shapes and allows for some visual interest on a model and really helps push brush control and you're not reliant on cleaning up gravity affected by strange effects on the paint. If you like this tutorial, why not consider subscribing?
it's free of charge it helps me out and you get further videos just like this in your youtube feed so until next time folks